Welcome back to the channel guys. Uh, today we will be discussing um, Canadian QROPs uh, for Canadian residents. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Dominic James Murray. I'm CEO and founder here at Cameron James and I've been completing UK pension transfers for over 10 years. Okay, so why are we talking about this today? So Canada is one of the few examples left in the world where there's a local product, um, a local uh, qualified uh, recognized overseas pension scheme, a QROPs, uh, for people to utilize while they are a Canadian resident. Now, if you know anything about QROPs, you will understand that in 2017, the UK government placed an overseas transfer charge of 25% for anybody utilizing a QROPs or completing a QROPs transfer who is not an EE8 member resident. Now, one of the, the stipulations, the caveats to that is if you are located in the same country um, as that QROPS product. So there's a few anomalies of this, which would be um, uh, New Zealand can be one of them, uh, Malta could be one of them, um, and Canada um, is also one of them. So if you are living in Canada and you're thinking, shall I utilize one of the QROPS schemes here in Canada or should I use an international SIP? Now, the only reason you might want to consider utilizing a QROPS over an international SIP is if you have a sizable UK pension scheme which is approaching your lifetime allowance of 1.073 million. Quick history on lifetime allowance, used to be 1.8 million, has effectively been reduced over the course of time by the Chancellor to pick that low hanging fruit um, to take extra tax from people's pensions. So my advice would be to you, you really have to proceed with caution if you're considering using a Canadian uh, based QROPS. I mentioned this uh, from experience. Um, so for example, we had a client about three months ago who we began an advice process with. He had a Canadian based QROPS. We contacted the scheme. We received all the trust deed and the information. Inside the trust deed document written in black and white, I won't mention the name of the provider, it stipulated that the client could transfer to any other qualified recognized overseas pension scheme or even UK pension, UK regulated pension. So we tried to complete an international SIP uh, transfer for the client as he was returning to Portugal and no longer wanted to have his Canadian based QROPS. Sounded simple. I thought it was a done deal. <laughs> We then went through a three or four month process uh, with his UK, with his Canadian based provider of back and forth and back and forth as to the legalities. They eventually came back after speaking with their compliant team on numerous occasions to say that it could only be transferred to another Canadian based QROPS, despite it saying in black and white in the trust deed that the client could transfer it to any other QROPS or UK pension. So, in the end, um, the client gave up. Um, he could have took litigation against them. He could have taken it to court. In the end, he couldn't be bothered because um, it wasn't worth his time. But this is something which is really important for you to understand if you are in Canada and you're considering using um, a Canadian-based QROPS. The other reasons why I would recommend not utilizing it is that Currently speaking, um, we're in uh, June 2021, there's three providers left in Canada who are regulated to conduct uh, QROPS transfers. That's not many. Um, if you compare that to the SIP market and the international SIP market, it's huge. So the costs have become much lower in the international SIP market. The product, the innovation, the online access, um, the service, everything is way, way better because there's huge competition for business. In Canada, you've got three providers um, that has dram dramatically reduced down. Their quality of service is not very good. You have to select from um, internal Canadian-based mutual funds which have annual management charges of between one to two percent per annum. When you could just use an ETF um, or a tracker at 0.07% uh, per annum, um, in order to track the market. So that's one reason you have a very poor access um, to investments inside the um, Canadian QROPS. B, if you were to leave Canada over a period of five years, you would have the overseas transfer charge at 25% would be applied to your original transfer. So it effectively means you're locking yourself um, in Canada. And finally, dealing with these people in Canada, the level of service which we experienced with this client's Canadian QROPS provider was shocking. Some of the emails they sent to us were just so far removed from the truth of UK pension legislation, we felt like forwarding it to HMRC and saying, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Um, so we were very concerned about this. And it, in their defense, it kind of makes sense. If you're a huge Canadian bank and you have this small QROPS product, do you really think it's important for them 
Do you really think they have staff sitting at board meetings discussing it every day? I don't think so. Their legacy policies which still haven't been closed. Whilst compared to SIPs and international SIP products, these are companies which are innovating all of the time. They're 100% on top of UK pension legislation and any transfers you need to make in the future, any withdrawals you need to make are extremely simple. So it would just be a word of warning from my side. If you are considering Canadian-based QROPs, you do still have the option to, and there might well be a couple of situations where you think it could be worthwhile, but my advice would be to not do it and to, at the very least, understand the comparison with an international SIP to understand how the benefits differ. Again, if you're concerned about lifetime allowance, have a conversation with us. We have ways in terms of crystallization events to help you avoid having to pay any additional lifetime allowance over 1.073 million. So it's not a simple case of saying if you don't use the QROPs, you can't achieve tax efficiency. Um, so I hope that was interesting for you today, guys. Bit of a technical uh, uh, video today, um, but I thought it was useful um, as we have had that client situation. Anybody in Canada, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly if you find this valuable. If there's anything else you want me to go into in more detail for another video, let me know. If not, I'm very happy um, to have a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you. You can book into my diary below uh, via Calendly. You can also go to the blog um, we've written um, on this specific topic to read it through in more detail on black and white and then reach out to us uh, when you feel comfortable. And as always, don't forget to subscribe below as my YouTube manager uh, will always tell me. Uh, have a good day, guys, and look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.